understand. It's our future and Belgium's future that I'm thinking of. The Catholic Church has narrowed your mind, Marianne, just as it has my mother's. But don't you see, Paul? You keep asking me to choose between you and my faith. I can't believe what you're saying, Marianne. You mean fresh ideas have no place in your mind? My God. We're into a new century, but you are stuck in the last, just like your damned clergy. Attacking the church won't help Belgium, Paul. It'll turn the people against you. I don't attack it. I want it to open its eyes. And as my wife, the wife of a government minister, you should support me in that. I married you for love, Paul, not to advance your political career. Marianne, come back here! in Brussels again after so many years. In the eye of my mind, Chief Inspector, I have never left. The place is bound to have changed, though. That's right. But we are not here for the memory lane of Poirot, Madame Mino. We come for the paying of the tributes to your good self. To be made a companion de la branche d'or, it is the highest honor my country can be stood. Uh, very kind of Belgium, yes. But all I've done over the years is my job. I'm not at all, Chief Inspector. Time and again, Ever since the Abercrombie forgery case, Isn't you have heard the Belgian police and my country it is grateful. Pity Emily couldn't come. Still, I think she's right. Brussels is a far cry from Isleworth. Her loss is my gain. It is an honor to deputize for Madame Jean. Warrell. Chantalier. <laughs> ah. Twenty years and you look the same. Is this fair, mon ami? Oh. <laughs> oh, pardon. You know the Chief Inspector Jap, of course. And we've worked together often. Congratulations on your new appointment, sir. Commissary, please. However did you manage, sir, when he went off to England? He wasn't always so clever, Chief Inspector. You remember Paul de Roula? <laughs> I remember that it was not I who made the mistakes in that case. It was everyone else. The old modesty lives on. Paul de Rollard died of natural causes, Hercule. The verdict of the court is there for all time. Mm -hmm. And it is wrong. Tell me what. I'm a disinterested party. Let me be the judge of this. It was just before the war, Chief Inspector. His death was reported to the police in the... That was the first mistake. The Derola case began two years earlier when his wife, Marianne, fell down the stairs to her death. An accident, Poirot. The Belgian philosopher himself, Georges Tabenot, once said to me, he said, Poirot, there is no such thing as an accident. However, we shall let that pass. On the night of his death, Paul Derola was entertaining some friends. Seated around the table were Virginie Ménard. Next to her, the distinguished friend of Paul, Le Comte de saint alard At the head of the table, the mother to Paul, Madame Derola. And at her side, her confidant and advisor, an old family friend, Gaston Beaujeu. Virginie was cousin to Marianne, the dead wife of Paul. That new language law, Paul. What exactly does it say? From now on, all commands in the army must be given in Flemish as well as French. All I pray is that you and your friends in government have no plans for the mass to be said in Flemish, Paul. Now I see it. This law 
is just the tip of the iceberg. Your late wife always said that one day you'd get your claws into the church. Absurd. Well, sit down, Santa Lal, before you make a fool of yourself. The press knows you're against the Catholic Church, Paul. For your own sake, I forbid you to say any more. And given half the chance, you'd appease the Kaiser as well. Then I suppose we'd all be speaking German. Another chocolate, Monsieur Bourgeois. After dinner, it was left to Gaston Beaujeu in his customary role as mediator to soothe the troubled waters. Thank you. You and saint Alard have been friends too long to fall out over politics. He lives in the past. A divided Belgium, Gaston. Flemings to the north, Walloons to the south. That's our history, not our future. But if Germany attacks, where will he stand then? In the front line, my friend, have no fear. He would take them on single-handed. At around midnight, the guests departed. Madame retired to her nightly devotions, and the Darola household slept. All except Paul, a slave to insomnia, who returned to his study in order to work. Paul had a reputation for his austerity and discipline. He did, however, have two vices, the pursuit of his career and chocolates. My duties as a junior police officer involved my regular attendance at the court of the coroner. And you agree, sir? The death of Paul Derola was treated by all those concerned as a matter of routine. Indeed not, Your Honor. Paul Derola. Those giving evidence saw no reason to question the death of Paul. And at first, neither did I. the victim of foul play. The principal witness in the case was my superior, Superintendent Boucher. might have been the case. Nothing whatsoever, monsieur. We searched the house and found nothing underwood. You may step down. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am more than satisfied that Paul Derolard's death, though a tragedy, of course, was due to heart failure. And I give my verdict accordingly. That can't be right. <laughs> you have further evidence, Mademoiselle Mina? I tell you, he can't just have died. Well, why do you take everyone at their word? I would advise you, mademoiselle, to guard your remarks when addressing me. Forgive her, monsieur, but she is much affected by the death. We will look after her. My colleague, Chantalier, and I felt that the case was being dismissed too readily. And although we were only there as observers, we decided it was our duty to raise the matter with Superintendent Boucher. Uh, Superintendent Boucher, one moment, if you please. Chantalier and myself, we would be very happy to investigate further the Derola case. What for, may I ask? Uh, the outburst of the young lady in court. Can, can we ignore that? And also the victim, he was a government minister. That is precisely why you will put it out of your mind, Poirot. Uh, Superintendent. The case is closed, gentlemen. But it was an invitation most unexpected. 
which ensured that the case was not closed. Ah, Hercule! André, bonjour, ça va? Mm -hmm. Why have you kept him a secret from me? What are you talking about, André? The young lady I spoke to you about. Oui. She's at table five. Ah. Merci. She asked for you, specially. By name? By moustache. service, mademoiselle. Virginie Ménard. Mademoiselle Ménard. Would you take a seat, please? Merci. I was in court, mademoiselle, when you expressed a certain doubt concerning the death of Monsieur Paul Derola. How can he have died of heart failure? He was such a robust man. And that is all upon which you base your doubt? His apparent good health? And some feminine instinct, monsieur. You believe in such a thing? Perhaps. Why is it that you come to me? A friend of mine is a secretary at the local paper. The editor mentions your name often. A spark in the otherwise dull embers of the police force, he says. He is a man of perception. <laughs> Will you help me, monsieur? Eh bien, mademoiselle, I have been told that the case is closed. But I am due some leave, which I shall take. A difficult smile to resist, eh, Ergil? Yes, indeed. Oh, if you think that the young lady and not the case attracted me, you do me a wrong clothes. Yet you still wear the trinket she gave you. What this? <laughs> Bien sûr. If you think that Poirot could not see beyond that smile most bewitching, and that her charm was such that... Uh, <laughs> Toujours la femme, Chief Inspector. Are you for phrase in English which means the same? Well, nothing as crisp as yours, sir. Uh, we just tend to say something like, mark my words, there'll be a woman at the bottom of it somewhere. Hercule, it's the Comte de saint -Alar. Ah, Monsieur le Comte, bonsoir. Will you join us? Have you come to interfere in yet more business that doesn't concern you? to ruin a few more reputations. As mayor of this city, Santala, your reputation has never been better. No thanks to this meddling upstart. I swore to myself, Poirot, the next time I saw you, no matter when it was, the very next time I Monsieur would... Monsieur Le Comte. If that's the Belgian aristocracy, it's about time you had a revolution. He was not entirely unprovoked, Chief Inspector. I was there, Poirot. You didn't do anything. But you were not there all those years ago, mon ami, when I gave him cause to resent me. This, um, Compagnon de la Branche door there awarding me, Poirot. Oui? I mean, what exactly is a branch door? It is the golden branch of an olive tree, mon ami. In Greek mythology, he who carried it became invincible. Very useful in our line of work, this not you, Inspector. Do we know who's presenting it yet? By tradition, it must be a fellow companion, but who it will be is yet undecided. The wife wanted royalty, of course, but I'm not fussy. Ah. The Derola house. It has changed very little. The refusal of Superintendent Boucher to further investigate the death had angered me. So it was that in the company of Virginie I began my own inquiries. 
On arriving at the Derula house, I met for the first time Madame Derula. You must introduce the young man, Virginie. She doesn't bring home many friends, monsieur. Hercule Poirot, madame. I am a policeman. I've seen too much of the police lately, monsieur Poirot. And all have believed that your son, he died of heart failure, madame. I see the work of your hand in this, Virginie. Forgive me, madame, but for Paul's sake, I couldn't live with my doubts. Perhaps I might be able to put her mind at rest, madame, when perhaps I have seen the study and spoken with your servants. Who is this lady? The wife of Monsieur Dorola? Yes, Marianne, my cousin. She died two years ago. An accident here in the house. Paul never really got over it. So he kept her in the desk? Out of sight, out of mind, perhaps. Mm, Paul and his mother had a permanent tussle. I never really quite understood. Paul would hide the photograph in the drawer. Mm. His mother would bring it out again. Oh, Monsieur Belchon. I'd like you to meet Hercule Poirot. Gaston is our neighbor. Monsieur? Monsieur? I would urge you to be mindful of Madame de Roulard's feelings. She has lost a son. I shall be discretionate, sir. But if a crime has been committed, you will agree that justice must be served. Huh? But these were made by a guest at your table the other night, Le Comte de saint -Alain. Yes, he always brings a box when he visits. And the night of the death of Paul de Rolla? Yes, we, we had some with our coffee. What color was the box at the table? I can't pink. remember. Pink. Are you certain, monsieur? It was not of the two colors, the pink and the green, comme ça? Oh, how curious, I wonder. I just told you. Both halves were pink. Then I suggest that there is somewhere a second box. One with a green lid and a pink mace. If anyone knew the whereabouts of the missing chocolate box, it would be the Derola servants. Virginie took me to meet them. This is Denise the cook and Jeanette the maid. Mademoiselle. Where's Francois, Denise? I think he's taken the afternoon off, mademoiselle. The chocolate box comprising the other two halves had been removed by the 80-year-old butler, Francois. That's the trouble with going back over crimes. The evidence gets lost. I agree that is usually the case, but not this time, Chief Inspector. The servant, Francois, had taken the box of chocolates to give to a lady friend. Over here, please, Chief Inspector, between these two pillars. If we must. Indeed we must. I have promised most faithfully to Madame Jet to bring her back the photographs. Is this all right to take now? I should do the trick for it. Oh. Thank you. Lady friend? This Francois, you said he was nearly 80. Only an Englishman would see the contradiction there, mon ami. I found them seated at a cafe playing chess, eating what was left of the chocolate. And the fact they were still alive told you their box wasn't poison. Merci, Madame. But this is the same box of chocolates that you handed around on the night of the tragedy. By the same box, but with a different lead, n'est-ce pas? I don't know. <laughs> Help yourself. Uh, no. Merci. Tell me, monsieur, have you ever had any disagreements with your employer? Over what? His easy ideas about religion, his accommodation of the Flemish language. <laughs> I'm too old to quarrel over trivial matters, monsieur. And yet there was an argument over dinner, was there not, between Le Comte de saint and his host? Uh, check. 
said that I attacked my employer for being a liberal. And Madame de Rola, his mother, she's also a liberal? Sadly, no. A good Catholic, monsieur, devout like saint Allah. Tell me, Francois, does any of the household use poisons? I do battle with the rats from time to time, but uh, not in the last three months. And does anyone take the medications, perhaps? There are madame's eye drops, but uh, would they be poisonous? Your move. Checkmate. Bonjour, Hélène. Monsieur Ferro, s'il vous plaît. Merci. C'est Monsieur Poirot. Thank you. Jean-Louis, bonjour, ça va? Oh, tell me this minute, what is between you and this Virginie me now? Jean-Louis, your long nose will be the death of you. Your safety is all that concerns me. Thank you. Jean-Louis, inside this envelope are crumbs of chocolate. I want you to tell me by your analysis exactly what they contain and whether or not they contain poison. Now, you're filling a regular prescription for Madame de Rola, huh? for the eye drops? Atropine. Atropine. Now, could this atropine kill a man? If drunk by the leader, perhaps. Ah, the death of Monsieur Derola. Oui. And the servant, Francois, brings you this prescription once a month? That's right. Although last week their neighbor brought it. Gaston Beaujeu? Yes. He required medication of his own. I waited eagerly for the results of the analysis of Jean-Louis. This was my first investigation as a private detective, but my good friend Chantalier was about to remind me that the day when Poirot could rule his own destiny was yet to come. Thank you. I've been looking everywhere for you. Why, there is a problem? I give you my word, Hercule, he didn't hear it from me. But Superintendent Boucher wants to see you. En voiture! Will I need earplugs? I've had Madame de Rollard here. She has friends in high places, Poirot. Xavier Santala, for one. He's likely to be the next mayor of Brussels, and as such, could make my life extremely difficult. Whereupon, I will make yours even more so. And what exactly have you found out, hmm? Just so that we know. It is my belief that Monsieur Paul Darola was poisoned. And poisoned by a chocolate made by the next mayor of this city. God in heaven, man. You don't just harass his friends. You accuse him of murder. I accuse no one. Yet. What did Boucher say? Oh, about my findings? He was impressed? Yeah. Never. I did not say favorably impressed. Hercule, for your own sake, you've got to drop this. Oh. Please, Virginie, make him see sense. I hope I haven't made things awkward for you, Hercule. Not at all, Virginie. Eh bien, at six o'clock, I have coming to my apartment a friend of mine who is a chemist. Huh? He is going to tell me exactly what those chocolates contain. If you have finished, would you come and meet him? Yes? Oh.
haven't told you how grateful I am for your help. I did nothing. But uh, perhaps, perhaps this will say it for me. You did. No. <laughs> but uh, at least you gave me the benefit of the doubt. Merci beaucoup. Help you. Ah, help you. It is exactly as we thought. Uh huh. The crumbs you gave me. Yes. Oh. Ah. Pardon, Jean-Louis Ferraud, allow me to introduce you to Mademoiselle Virginie Mana. Enchanté. Thank you so much for everything you're doing to help me. Diable. Wait! Wait, I have the police! Wait! Monsieur Beaujeu, what's happening? Explain yourself. My heart, Poirot. What pills? The waistcoat pocket. Do not worry, monsieur. We will get you to a hospital. What was he after in your flat? The envelope containing the crumbs of chocolate. Which weren't there anyway. Has your chemist friend done his analysis? Oh, yeah. The crumbs contain a substance called trinitrin. It is taken for the high blood pressure. And Jean-Louis had made up an urgent prescription for Gaston Beaujeu two days before the murder. So you'd got him? And what is more, Chief Inspector, the taste of those pills is so vile that they were made of chocolate. Wait a minute. Why did Chantalier say that you'd made a pig's ear of this one, then? Because that is what I allowed him to believe. Perhaps the time has now come to straighten the record. This lot, they're all Compagnon de la Branche door, are they? Each and every one a hero. Not what you'd call young, are they? Oh. Young at heart, perhaps. Stand up. Bienvenue, compagnon de la branche d'or. I did not know that Gaston Beaujeu had been made a compagnon. Oh, yes. I look around this hall today. And I see nothing but heroes. Men who have made great sacrifices. (coughs) 
Today we honor an English policeman for services beyond the call of duty. And as he joins the ranks of the invincible few, I proclaim James Harold Jap, a compagnon de la branche d'or. Vive compagnon! Vive le compagnon! Good evening. Nice to see you. Ah, congratulations, Chief Inspector. It's an honor to be one of your select company, sir. Don't forget, our reunion dinners are quite something. And you must tell Madame Jap we expect her here next time. No, <laughs> merci. Congratulations, Chief Inspector Jap. Oh, vous êtes très élégant. Come, let us have some food. Uh, I think it's uh, help yourself time, Poirot. Merci. Not a bad chap, that Beaujeu, once you start talking. No, I am sure of it. Yeah, but you had him down as a suspect at one stage. Well, even the good chaps can sometimes kill their fellow men, Chief Inspector. I believe Paul de Roulard was poisoned with trinitrin. Pills that you take for high blood pressure. Someone stole my burrow from the house, from my coat. I can't be sure. I would like to think that you're innocent, monsieur. But you told no one that the pills were missing. And then you broke into my apartment, presumably to steal the crumbs of chocolate, evidence which might incriminate you. I'm going to take you into my confidence, Poirot, which you must promise to respect. I give you my word, monsieur. I work for Belgian intelligence, and my present job is to find out just who in the government would collaborate with Germany if she wedges war. So Paul Derola was not so much a friend as a mine of information? Unwittingly, yes. Then let us hope that for his indiscretions, he did not pay with his life. He tells me he is a member of the Secret Service and then he makes me promise to keep secret this whole affair. You see how he ties my hands? How do I verify his story without breaking the confidence? Well, at least he agrees with us that Paul was murdered. Yes. Whether or not by him is another matter. He had the means, but not the motive. That is why we must dig deeper. You know I would like to visit the Chateau of saint huh? Eh? but there is a problem. Monsieur Le Comte is always there. There's one thing he'll always venture out for. What? The opera. Thank you. Ah, Virginie. Take care of her, monsieur. Three 
times a day, Monsieur Gaston Berjour. Found in the pocket of Xavier Saint-Alain. Like you, you're a genius. Maybe so. <laughs> but to reopen the case, Superintendent Boucher will need a confession from Saint-Alain himself. Hercule, I'm not sure you'd allow me to do this, but... Saint-Alain holds me in high regard. In fact, I... You mean he's in love with you? Oh, please don't think I return his affection, Hercule. <laughs> far, far from it. I believe you, Virginie. Then why don't I persuade him to talk? Oh, no. No, Virginie, this man, he could be a murderer. If you were there... The audacity of the plan of Virginie appealed to me very much. That night, Francois had taken Madame de Rola to visit some friends. The maid and the cook were there for free for the evening. Virginie had left the door at the back of the house unlocked, and the trap, it was ready to be sprung. In spite of our differences, Paul could be such an amusing man. Well, that was thoughtless of me. I haven't mentioned his death since it happened, and now it was too early to do so. Forgive me. No, 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 Xavier, you misunderstand. You see, I can't help thinking that his death was a just punishment. Virginie, I know the cause of his death troubles you. He died of heart failure. Nothing else. Some people do anything for their faith, Servier. I admire that. Suppose someone knew that Paul had plans to limit the church's power in Belgium. Would it be a sin to remove him? To murder him? Oh, such people would never be seen as common murderers, though. But as saviors. But well, at least by the church, don't you agree? Virginie, you say all this to comfort me, I know. I had no right to expect such understanding. Least of all from a member of his family. What do you mean? I'm the one responsible for his death, Virginie. You killed him? Surely as if I'd fired a pistol at his heart. Monsieur Pau. What in God's name are you doing here? You break into his private apartment. Now, for most men, that would be enough. But not Poirot, no. Poirot then goes on to try to trick him into a confession. His last words, Superintendent, before the return of Madame de Rola were, as surely as if I had fired a pistol at his heart. Yes, Poirot. As if. As if. As if. On the night Paul de Rola died, there was an argument at the table. Santala believes that argument led to the seizure that carried Paul off. I believe that you yourself should question him further. I do not need your advice on how to proceed, Poirot. On the contrary, you need mine. And you will begin by visiting Madame de Rollard and apologizing to her for all the distress you have caused. I have come to apologize to you. I should like you to stay, Virginie. So, you think my son was murdered? I believe that your son was poisoned, madame, by Xavier saint -Alard. Poisoned? Well, saint uses his own chocolates. Are people so stupid? Oh, yes, madame. You would be surprised. The stonemason he murders with his hammer, the cutler with his knife, the sweetmaker 
with his soft centers. I took some crumbs of chocolate from this box, madame. May I? Thank you. They contain a substance called Trinitrin, a drug prescribed to your neighbor Gaston Beaujeu. And you questioned him? Oui, madame, and he told me that the pills, they had been stolen. And when I searched the Chateau of saint alard I found there the pill bottle which was empty. A finding is one thing. Can you prove all this? Tomorrow I have an appointment with the Minister of Justice, and he cannot argue with the scientific analysis of Jean-Louis Ferraud. And all from one little mistake. Francois told me to do with chocolate boxes, I believe. Oui, madame. Having taken a few of the chocolates from one box, poisoned them and then put them back into another box, the murderer replaced the lid incorrectly. The green lid on the pink box. Such details are always at the heart of a case, madame. You said the green lead to the pink box. Quite so. Madame de Rolin, in order that the wrong person does not go to the guillotine, I beg of you, tell me once again, what is the color of the lid and what is the color of the box? My eyesight is not what it was, monsieur. Your prescription for eye drops should have told me of the great burden you carried. For it was you, Madame de Roland, who killed your son. Despite your failing eyesight, you added the liquid trinitrin from Beaujeu's pills to a sweet filling. You then put this mixture into the chocolates from the study of Paul. You replaced the glassy fruit to conceal the lethal concoction within. Having poisoned the chocolates which were to kill him, you then made your only mistake. The wrong lid to the wrong box. Having used the pills of Beaujeu, you then placed the pill bottle which was empty into the coat pocket of Le Comte de saint alard Why, madame? To get it away from the house? Don't worry. I wouldn't let him die for my crime, much as I dislike the man. Well, why, madame? Why kill your own son? Because of what he was doing to our country, Virginie, and our church. Well, I pray, monsieur. No woman in the world need ever choose again. Between love of God and the love of her child. But to take a life is a mortal sin, madame. How can a woman of such conviction so deny her faith? Paul was a murderer, monsieur. She did not die from an accident. Can't you understand? It's our future and Belgium's future that I'm thinking of. I married you for love, Paul. Not to advance your political career. Marianne! Come back here! Marianne! I knew I'd seen him do it, but we never spoke of it. Each of us afraid to admit he was capable of doing such a thing. Oh, so instead you taunt him by displaying the photograph. Before I died, I had to see justice done. My doctors tell me I have no more than six months left in this world. Will the truth wait six months, monsieur? Perhaps longer, madame. You must tell it. Tell all when I've gone. Why didn't you? Why leave it till now?
And why did Virginie say nothing? Mm -hmm. She and I agreed that it would be my decision. Paul Derola, he was a murderer. His mother acted for the greater good of the country. I admired her sacrifice, her moral courage. Who does anything these days for the greater good? At least I understand why Sir Allard bears a grudge. You trying to trap him like that? Did you never make your peace with him? Well, had I told him the reason why I suspected him? Ah, oh, merci. No. Had I told him the reason why I suspected him, that I found the bottle of Trinitrin in his coat pocket, he might then have asked me who put it there. Madame de Roulat. I could not risk his curiosity. I wrote to him, of course, apologizing for my behavior, which was foolhardy, irresponsible. And no doubt he agrees with that to this very day. Claude, would you sit there, please, Chief Inspector? One of those things we have to live with in our profession. Oui, bien sûr. Ah! Jean-Louis. Thank you. <laughs> to see you is to be young again. I've thought about you often down the years. Ah, moi aussi, moi aussi. Ah, mon ami, mon ami. Hercule, Hercule, I would like you to meet my two sons. Your two sons? This is Henri. Henri. And this brave fellow is Hercule. Hercule? You are indeed fortunate to have such fine sons. Henri, he has the look of someone, yes? No, perhaps I am wrong. No, I am right. Hercule also, there is a definite resemblance to someone I know. My wife, perhaps? Virginie. Bonsoir, Madame Faro. I was uh, just saying to Jean-Louis uh, that he was always the most fortunate of men.
understand. It's our future and Belgium's future that I'm thinking of. The Catholic Church has narrowed your mind, Marianne, just as it has my mother's. But don't you see, Paul? You keep asking me to choose between you and my faith. I can't believe what you're saying, Marianne. You mean fresh ideas have no place in your mind? My God. We're into a new century, but you are stuck in the last, just like your damned clergy. Attacking the church won't help Belgium, Paul. It'll turn the people against you. I don't attack it. I want it to open its eyes. And as my wife, the wife of a government minister, you should support me in that. I married you for love, Paul, not to advance your political career. Marianne, come back here! in Brussels again after so many years. In the eye of my mind, Chief Inspector, I have never left. The place is bound to have changed, though. That's right. But we are not here for the memory lane of Poirot, Madame Mino. We come for the paying of the tributes to your good self. To be made a companion de la Branche d'Or, it is the highest honor my country can be stood. Uh, very kind of Belgium, yes. But all I've done over the years is my job. I'm not a door of Chief Inspector. Time and again, Ever since the Abercrombie forgery Mais case, you have heard the Belgian police and my country, it is grateful. Pity Emily couldn't come. Still, I think she's right. Brussels is a far cry from Isleworth. Her loss is my gain. It is an honor to deputize for Madame Jean. Warrow. Chantalier. <laughs> ah. Mon Dieu. 20 years and you look the same. Is this fair, mon ami? Oh. <laughs> oh, pardon. You know the Chief Inspector Jap, of course. We work together often. Congratulations on your Thank new you appointment, you. sir. Commissary, please. However did you manage, sir, when he went off to England? He wasn't always so clever, Chief Inspector. You remember Paul de Roula? I remember that it was not I who made the mistakes in that case. It was everyone else. The old modesty lives on. Paul de Rola died of natural causes, Hercule. The verdict of the court is there for all time. Mm -hmm. And it is wrong. Tell me what. I'm a disinterested party. Let me be the judge of this. It was just before the war, Chief Inspector. His death was reported to the police in the... That was the first mistake. The Derola case began two years earlier when his wife, Marianne, fell down the stairs to her death. An accident, Poirot. The Belgian philosopher himself, Georges Tabano, once said to me, he said, Poirot, there is no such thing as an accident. However, we shall let that pass. On the night of his death, Paul Derola was entertaining some friends. Seated around the table were Virginie Ménard. Next to her, the distinguished friend of Paul, Le Comte de saint alard At the head of the table, the mother to Paul, Madame Derola. And at her side, her confidant and advisor, an old family friend, Gaston Beaujeu. Virginie was cousin to Marianne, the dead wife of Paul. That new language law, Paul, what exactly does it say? From now on, all commands in the army must be given in Flemish as well as French. All I pray is that you and your friends in government have no plans for the mass to be said in Flemish, Paul. Now I see it. 
This law is just the tip of the iceberg. Your late wife always said that one day you'd get your claws into the church. Absurd. Well, sit down, Santa Lal, before you make a fool of yourself. The press knows you're against the Catholic Church, Paul. For your own sake, I forbid you to say any more. And given half the chance, you'd appease the Kaiser as well. Then I suppose we'd all be speaking German. Another chocolate, Monsieur Bourgeois. After dinner, it was left to Gaston Beaujeu in his customary role as mediator to soothe the troubled waters. Thank you. You and saint Alar have been friends too long to fall out over politics. He lives in the past. A divided Belgium, Gaston. Flemings to the north, Walloons to the south. That's our history, not our future. But if Germany attacks, where will he stand then? In the front line, my friend, have no fear. He would take them on single-handed. At around midnight, the guests departed. Madame retired to her nightly devotions, and the Darola household slept. All except Paul, a slave to insomnia, who returned to his study in order to work. Paul had a reputation for his austerity and discipline. He did, however, have two vices, the pursuit of his career and chocolates. My duties as a junior police officer involved my regular attendance at the court of the coroner. And you agree, sir? The death of Paul de Rolla was treated by all those concerned as a matter of routine. Indeed not, Your Honor. Paul de Rolla. Those giving evidence saw no reason to question the death of Paul. And at first, neither did I. Being the victim of foul play. The principal witness in the case was my superior, Superintendent Boucher. Might have been the case. Nothing whatsoever, monsieur. We searched the house and found nothing untoward. You may step down. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am more than satisfied that Paul Derolard's death, though a tragedy, of course, was due to heart failure. And I give my verdict accordingly. That can't be right. <laughs> you have further evidence, Mademoiselle Mina? I tell you, he can't just have died. Well, why do you take everyone at their word? I would advise you, mademoiselle, to guard your remarks when addressing me. Forgive her, monsieur, but she is much affected by the death. We will look after her. My colleague, Chantalier, and I felt that the case was being dismissed too readily. And although we were only there as observers, we decided it was our duty to raise the matter with Superintendent Boucher. Uh, Superintendent Boucher, one moment, if you please. Chantalier and myself, we would be very happy to investigate further the Derola case. What for, may I ask? Uh, the outburst of the young lady in court. Can, can we ignore that? And also the victim, he was a government minister. That is precisely why you will put it out of your mind, Poirot. Uh, Superintendent. The case is closed, gentlemen. But it was an invitation most unexpected. 
which ensured that the case was not closed. Ah, Hercule! André, bonjour, ça va? Mm -hmm. Why have you kept it a secret from me? What are you talking about, André? The young lady I spoke to you about. Oui. She's at table five. Ah. Merci. She asked for you, specially. By name? By moustache. service, mademoiselle. Virginie Maynard. Mademoiselle Maynard. Would you take a seat, please? Merci. I was in court, mademoiselle, when you expressed a certain doubt concerning the death of Monsieur Paul Derola. How can he have died of heart failure? He was such a robust man. And that is all upon which you base your doubt? His apparent good health? And some feminine instinct, monsieur. You believe in such a thing? Perhaps. Why is it that you come to me? A friend of mine is a secretary at the local paper. The editor mentions your name often. A spark in the otherwise dull embers of the police force, he says. He's a man of perception. <laughs> Will you help me, monsieur? Eh bien, mademoiselle, I have been told that the case is closed. But I am due some leave, which I shall take. A difficult smile to resist, eh, Ergil? Yes, indeed. Oh, if you think that the young lady and not the case attracted me, you do me a wrong clothes. Yet you still wear the trinket she gave you. What this? <laughs> Bien sûr. If you think that Poirot could not see beyond that smile most bewitching, and that her charm was such that... Uh, <laughs> Toujours la femme, Chief Inspector. Are you for phrase in English which means the same? Well, nothing as crisp as yours, sir. Uh, we just tend to say something like, mark my words, there'll be a woman at the bottom of it somewhere. Hercule, it's the Comte de saint -Alar. Ah, Monsieur le Comte. Bonsoir. Will you join us? Have you come to interfere in yet more business that doesn't concern you? to ruin a few more reputations. As mayor of this city, Santala, your reputation has never been better. No thanks to this meddling upstart. I swore to myself, Poirot, the next time I saw you, no matter when it was, the very next time I Monsieur would... Monsieur Le Comte. If that's the Belgian aristocracy, it's about time you had a revolution. He was not entirely unprovoked, Chief Inspector. I was there, Poirot. You didn't do anything. But you were not there all those years ago, mon ami, when I gave him cause to resent me. <laughs> <laughs>